morning, everyone. I think in the interest of time, we're going to get started now. I ask that you please take some uh, take a seat. Good morning, everyone. My name is Roy Nascimento. I'm president and CEO of the uh, New Bedford Area Chamber of Commerce. It's a pleasure to welcome you here this morning to this uh, press conference. As uh, as way of background, uh, the chamber is a um, nonprofit business association based here in New Bedford. Uh, we represent about a thousand uh, members, mainly small and medium-sized businesses. About 50% of those members are right here in the city of New Bedford. Uh, the other 50% are in the nine surrounding communities. We are a regional uh, chamber of commerce. And uh, we're here today to talk a little bit about um, the Greater New Bedford Connecting Activities Partnership. And that's a partnership that the Chamber is involved in. We're one of the, uh, the partners. Uh, the other partners are the uh, City of New Bedford, Office of the Mayor. And we have with us today uh, John Mitchell, Mayor of New Bedford, and you'll hear from him in a little while. We also have with us the uh, Greater New Bedford Workforce Investment Board and Youth Council. They're one of the partners with the Connecting Activities Partnership. And with us today, uh, we have Jim Oliveira, Director of Operations, and you'll hear from him. Uh, we also have uh, Bristol Community College. They are one of the major partners involved in the Connecting Activities Partnership, and we're lucky uh, to have uh, several members of, uh, of the Br Bristol Community College leadership team here, uh, especially their, their leader, uh, Jack Spraga, president of Bristol Community College, and uh, Peg Kuro is here somewhere as well, and she's been instrumental in connecting activities so and starting it up. So uh, thank you all. In addition to the, uh, the partners, uh, we also have um, five schools that are involved in the Greater New Bedford Connecting Activities Partnership. Uh, they are Dartmouth High School, Fairhaven High School, Global Learning Charter Public School, New Bedford High School, and Old Rochester Regional High School. And the partnership, our mission is really to uh, focus in on career exploration programs, really to connect employers uh, with students. Uh, we provide about 400 internships every year to high school se seniors from these five participating schools. Over 200 employers participate in, uh, in these activities. We also do uh, some um, career exploration programs such as uh, career fairs. And in the past, we've also done teacher externships. Uh, so it's a great program uh, of work that the uh, partnership has. It's one of the, uh, uh, one of the strongest uh, programs of its kind uh, in the state and one of the most uh, effective in terms of uh, delivering these types of career exploration programs. Uh, we are here today because the uh, partnership is looking to expand its services. Uh, we are going to be offering a new program, a pilot program, uh, here in New Bedford called Choices. And uh, this is a basically a dropout prevention program uh, that it engages employers and other volunteers in the community and brings them into the schools. Uh, to talk a little bit more about Choices, I'd like to ask, uh, before we get into the speakers, uh, Noelle Pina, who uh, is with the Chamber. She's our employer specialist, and she's very involved in the Connecting Activities Partnership. And she's going to just uh, uh, review uh, choices with you. Thank you. Before I begin, I'd just like to um, recognize my other two members of my team here at Connecting Activities, Kristen Almeida and Zell Lagarde. The three of us work together to provide the services that Roy spoke about to the school, so it's definitely a team effort. And this is another service that we're hoping, well, we're starting it in New Bedford and we'd like to expand it to our other schools. So um, this is the Choices Workshop. Next slide, please. So how many of you remember when you were 13 years old? Remember all the changes you were going through, the choices you were making about friends, school, what to wear? Do you ever wonder about your future, where your, what your life would be like? Did you ever need help making decisions, getting through tough times? Did you ever make choices you regretted? A lot of kids right now are making choices that will hurt them in the future. In fact, 1.3 million kids will drop out of school this year. Why? Because they're bored or they're not performing well. This impacts not just them, but all of us. In fact, dropouts comprise more than half of the people on welfare and in prison. The unemployment rate of dropouts is more than three times that of college graduates. And their annual income is less than half of that of a college grad. Studies show that most dropouts don't feel they have much control in their lives. Conversely, high school graduates have lots of control, and that contributes to higher academic achievement. The real keys to their achievement are caring relationships, positive expectations, and meaningful involvement. Kids want caring adults who will talk straight to them about what the real world is like. 
Choices is a way for these caring adults to do just that. It's an interactive decision-making workshop that empowers teens to achieve academic success in pursuit of their career and life aspirations. In two 50-minute sessions, business and community volunteers take students through real-world exercises on academic self-discipline, time and money management, and goal setting. It's a unique combination of low-cost and short-time commitment, while it's still making a significant impact on teens. Choices is a powerful vehicle for sustainable business education partnerships. Choices offers a vital, accessible, and cost-effective formula for helping kids. Choices immediately establishes with students the balancing concepts of personal empowerment and personal responsibility. In the very first exercise, kids discover that they can take control of many factors that influence their lives. In the money management exercise, a student volunteer pretends to drop out of school, move out of the house, and get a job making nine bucks an hour. That's $1,500 a month, which is a lot of money to an eighth grader, until they start paying the bills and discover halfway down the list that they've run out of money. In the school decisions exercise, students learn that a higher level of education will bring them more choices and opportunities in their lives. We end the workshop by giving each child the hope and belief that they can mold their lives by choosing who <coughs> and what they want to be. And it works. Choices is making a difference. In one study, 38% of students reported that their intentions to invest more time and effort into their attendance resulted in actual increases. Another study showed that Choices participants increased their positive engagement in school by 9% and reduced their negative and non-engagement by another 9% a swing of 18% overall. Students appreciate the fact we care and we take the time to offer them practical skills and a vision for their future. They just need someone to say, you can realize their dreams. Choices is a preventative program. We target this age group because they're old enough to think seriously about their future, but still young enough to do something about it. The program was started in Seattle, Washington. A concerned father tried to help his son before it was too late, and then began sharing this message with kids in school in Seattle, Washington. Choices Now has served six million teens across the U.S. and Canada, and hundreds of program sites continue to reach out to new teens each year. Choices addresses diverse populations of all ability and performance levels. Regardless of career interests, Choices serves all socioeconomic and ethnic groups in urban, suburban, and rural communities. It has received wide acceptance among these demographics. At Whitman Middle School in Seattle, after a recent Choices presenter, one student told a presenter, Choices talked me into staying in school and not giving up. Everyone wants Choices. I invite you to make a choice today to help more kids tomorrow. We are looking for presenters who can deliver the Choices Workshop to students at New Bedford High School and Hastings Middle School in Fairhaven. In addition, I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have, so any of you may contact me anytime about it. And thank you very much. Great job, Noelle. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Mayor John Mitchell up to the uh, podium to say some remarks. Um, I, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, I, I think this initiative is exactly where the business community ought to be uh, under the circumstances. Um, you know, we've, we've had headlines in our community over the last several weeks, especially about the plight of our school system, about um, the uh, steady and very still very high dropout rate. Um, and we need to, to do something about it. And so I want to uh, commend uh, the Chamber, Roy, and Noel for their initiative in this area. It really is a place where the business community needs to, to step up, and they are doing that. Uh, we also recognize uh, Jim Oliveira uh, from the web. His, his boss, Len Coriardi, is uh, not here for their involvement, as well as my friend Jack Sprague, a president of, uh, of BCC, for his involvement, his continuing involvement in uh, raising the, the skill levels of our city. What, what attracts me especially to this program, to the Choices program, is that it's an opportunity for kids to visualize why their education matters. 
uh, that's it. And so many we, we have we can debate why kids drop out, and they drop out for for many reasons. And um, kids who stay in school oftentimes don't apply themselves as much as uh, uh, as much as they they should. Uh, this program applies to to them too. And one of one of the uh, the root causes it seems to me is the fact that there's so many kids who can't picture where they're going, where they need to go, where they might go uh, once their schooling is done. Uh, there is, we talk about kids having a lack of motivation. Well, in order to be motivated to do anything, you need to have a picture of, of, of uh, where you want to go. And so that's what, that's what this does. And it's an opportunity, uh, a very real opportunity for kids to, uh, to be exposed to successful adults, adults who have good habits, uh, adults who, give them, who will give them the opportunity to manage time, uh, to develop into personal skills, and to really uh, get a sense of what the workaday world uh, is like. I can tell you from my own experience after graduating from college and never having worked in an office, um, that when I first worked in an office, a lot of these, those, those basic skills, those basic professional skills were foreign to me. And I'm sure that many of you have had the same experience as well. They're important skills. Uh, and they take time to develop, and the sooner that kids develop them, develop those skills, uh, the the better. Um, and so uh, it, this is this is uh, this has the the workings, the makings of a very effective program. What's needed, however, is that uh, is for other members of the business community to step up. Uh, I've been asked uh, on so many occasions uh, by by folks who. You know, don't necessarily have kids in the, in the New Bedford school system or other school systems. What what can I do to help out? What can I do to make uh, a difference? And um, this there is an opportunity right here uh, to make a difference uh, with a modest dedication of time. And so uh, we're talking what Noel, just a few hours really at, at a minimum um, uh, on the part of business leaders, not just business leaders but other professionals. Uh, to uh, to walk kids through the ropes um, and um, and you know you never know if you've done it once or twice you might just like it enough to continue uh, to continue with it but it's a it's um, it's really incumbent upon uh, others in the business community beyond folks in the chamber to recognize that there is a, a need here uh, to be filled uh, that. Uh, the long-run success of our community will, uh, depends chiefly on the performance of our school system. The long-run success of our, our business community depends on the performance of our school system. And so therein lies um, uh, an obligation on the part of the business community to, to do their part. And so I urge businesses in our community, and I will today and, and going forward, uh, to, uh, to uh, embrace this program as being something that we're, we're one can make a difference in one child's life. We do this one at a time. Um, we will, over time, see progress. So um, uh, I commend you again, Roy and Noel, for your hard work, and I uh, look forward to working with you on this project. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your support and uh, those kind words. That's uh, very much appreciated. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Jack Spraga from Bristol Community College to come up with, for some remarks. He's been a, a very strong advocate and uh, supporter of this program. Well, thank you, Roy, and uh, good, e good mo morning, everyone. Uh, what a wonderful event this is. Uh, we always celebrate milestones in education, and uh, this is wonderful to see the community coming together. Uh, I should tell you, at uh, uh, Bristol Community College, uh, we have a wonderful program uh, for dropout recovery in New Bedford. Thanks to the office of the superintendent, and Superintendent Francis has been wonderful about getting this started. And our dean, uh, Terry Romanovich, uh, is running our middle college. Uh, uh, and we have uh, you know support from the mayor's office. So many people are involved. And I, I hesitate to try to name everyone. But the idea is to uh, find uh, dropouts uh, who are, have already uh, made the unfortunate choice of dropping out and bring them back uh, so that they will accumulate courses at BCC, accumulate high school units for graduation from the high school, as well as uh, 
uh, accumulate college credits at BCC, so we give them a kind of a jump start uh, for the rest of their career uh, in, in education. And this program uh, is a remarkable complementary uh, piece of it uh, in terms of dropout uh, prevention, which is where we want to start because they're in school in the first place and we don't want them to drop out. And as Noel has uh, pointed out, uh, it's, it brings the community together, uh, the business uh, business community, as the mayor pointed out as well, very uh, necessary to make this go. They will listen. Uh, they, the students, will listen to uh, people who have been in the front lines in business. They know what the real world is about. Uh, and uh, BCC uh, pledges its support. I rarely, I rarely try to speak for the chancellor of UMass Dartmouth, but I know Chancellor McCormick uh, is very supportive of this as well. And uh, we have a great uh, a partnership with the uh, uh, superintendent and the chancellor and myself in the world of education uh, through the mayor's office, uh, through the chamber uh, and uh, the WIB, and uh, we're, we're moving forward uh, to support the people, really, the people of uh, New Bedford by bringing, uh, bringing to them the levels of literacy, the levels of education that we can, we can raise. Uh, the idea of college, I brought with me the definition of a college readiness uh, is someone who has the knowledge and skills necessary for success in post-secondary education and economically viable pathways in the 21st century. Uh, so we prepare them not only to succeed in education, the world of education, whether it's an associate's degree at, uh, at Bristol Community College or a, a baccalaureate at UMass Dartmouth or wherever, or even beyond in graduate work. But we also prepare them to, uh, for success in, the, in that uh, world of economics, the real world, right, where we have to work. And the connecting activities uh, uh, from uh, Bristol Community College is uh, just a superior program. I don't know why it's not everywhere in this world, uh, not just New Bedford, but New Bedford has stepped forward with it, and uh, uh, Zelia and Christian and, uh, and Kristen and uh, uh, all of the people that have been involved with it, Peg Coro, uh, uh, I'm very pleased with the way we're doing it with Bristol Community College and bringing together that real-world connection and making sure that the partnerships uh, uh, prevail. So I want to thank all of everyone that's been involved. I want to echo the mayor's uh, uh, call for uh, the business community to help out, uh, and they always have in the past in New Bedford whenever we've asked. And I think that uh, the partnership will only expand, and only, only good things can come of it. So I thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Jack. We're very lucky here in New Bedford to have a wonderful workforce investment board that is very proactive. Uh, they have been very, very supportive of this program and other programs. Uh, it's led by Len Coriardi, who's the executive director there. He's not available to speak today. He's still on, he's on vacation. Uh, but with, him, uh, with us today, we have um, uh, Jim Oliveira, who's the director of operations, uh, the number two person at the workforce investment board. And I'd like to welcome him up to uh, say a few welcome remarks. Thank you, Roy. Uh, I'm very happy to be here for a number of reasons. Uh, uh, I uh, came on with the WIP uh, uh, several months ago and uh, was thrust into a dual role of being the director of operations and also uh, filling in as the uh, youth council director. And I couldn't have been happier. Some people would, would say, gee, you know, you've got two jobs now. You only, uh, you know, you only bargain for one, and uh, that's what my wife said too. Uh, but you know, uh, the issue of uh, helping youth understand uh, the importance of, of staying in school and uh, making a career choice is is one that's been uh, very clear to me over the years. Uh, I've always had an interest in talking with young people and and uh, explaining to them. Uh, the benefits of uh, maintaining and continuing their education. I'm a product of the New Bedford school system. Uh, very difficult for me as a first-generation ge first uh, individual to go through college and to lead four other fo folks in my family all the way through as well. And, uh, uh, you know, we were, we were pretty forceful with each other in terms of maintaining and, and continuing to uh, attain an education. Um, even with parents who were, were folks who had high school educations. They saw the value of it. And um, the, the social networks over the years have broken down uh, to the extent that uh, 
uh, you know, you have a lot of um, disjointed families in the communities. And uh, uh, as a result of that, uh, sometimes the message does not come as clear as it used to uh, be, be clear in generations before us. That said, uh, the web is very happy to uh, partner strategically with the chamber and uh, utilizing its business community connections. Uh, we, um, uh, I got acclimated to con connecting activities uh, rather quickly. And what I found was a very fascinating story about how these folks uh, work tirelessly, tirelessly to help young people understand the importance of, of their education and understand the importance of work and how it works and to, and to develop work-based learning plans that lead to these internships and provide opportunities for children to understand the world of work more appropriately. When Choices was presented to me, uh, I, they, uh, I had three women come to my office and, and say, you got to do this program. Said, you got to find some money. And uh, we, uh, we had a discussion over that with, uh, with Peg as well. And uh, uh, we had a very successful year with connecting activities at, at some of the schools. Uh, contribute to uh, the program as well. This is uh, additional, it's what, what we would call in the business unencumbered money. And as a result of that, we took a good hard look at the, the funds that were available and said, this is a winner. And it's a winner because you're drilling down into the lower grades now. And making connections with kids in the lower grades to have them understand the value of an education and continuing to uh, to continuing to make the appropriate choice of some post-secondary, if not uh, full post-secondary education. And uh, very clearly, uh, uh, we, we support this program on behalf of the WIB. Uh, it's also supported by our Youth Council. We have a new youth, youth Council director here, by the way, Linda Hutchison. She's uh, been on board with us for about a month, and she's a fireball and uh, has, uh, has some great opinions that I, I value already. So I look forward to uh, Linda working along with this program. There are a number of programs that the WIB sponsors, both for in-school and out-of-school youth. We've got CS2, which is over here, that operates in the high school, and they've got a great program as well. And we operate three other out-of-school programs, which total are roughly a, are around a half a million dollars. So the WIB, in its, in its own uh, right, is uh, uh, as a business community, a uh, business-led board, in this community is um, uh, making a very, very conscious effort to uh, provide assistance to both in-school and out-of-school youth so that they can continue to further themselves and to uh, meet the challenges of the 21st century, the job challenges of the 21st century as well. So I thank you for allowing me to be here today, and um, I look forward to being here in the future as well. Thank you. And last but not least, um, I'd like to introduce the superintendent here in New, uh, New Bedford, Dr. Mary Louise Francis. She has been a, a terrific supporter of this program. We met with her probably, what, about a year ago and talked about this program, and she was uh, very, very supportive. So we thank her for her support and I'd like to welcome you up for some remarks. Well, thank you very much, Roy. I appreciate that. Uh, I think this is an example of It Takes a Village, and uh, it's a wonderful um, thing when we have a community with uh, Chamber of Commerce and uh, WIB and uh, so many businesses that are willing to step up to the plate and participate. This is all part of uh, what the community would consider and what New Bedford Public Schools would consider college and career readiness. Uh, this is really um, trying to change the perspective on dropout prevention to staying in school. And, and moving forward. And what we want to do is put into place um, things that will support students in that perspective that they can have, the motivation that they will sustain in, in moving forward towards um, college and career readiness. 
Uh, so as, as um, you know, we were hearing earlier, getting down to the, the grade levels be just, just at the early um, high school level or just below, very, very important. That's a critical time when students are beginning to, to look at things and look to the future. Um, and I think what happens is, and what we were talking about earlier, what was mentioned earlier, is the fact that um, there's some authenticity there. When you hear from the real world, when you hear people from the business community who are not just educators saying, well, you need to stay in school or you need to study your, you know, your, uh, you know, your algebra. Uh, these are these are real people who are earning dollars, who are contributing to the community, and who really um, have that sense of of what's it all about. And that's what the students can connect with. So the choices program is extremely extremely important in that. The other thing is this does connect to the other things going on in the community and and the WIB, uh, RCS squared folks here, and and so many folks at the high school and and again in the community are working together daily to make this happen. It's so so important. Um, and again in New Bedford, we are really moving forward towards this college and career readiness concept. Uh, so it's it's having the students understand why they're there, doing some career exploration, what might they want to do. They listen to the to, to some of the folks coming in and, and some of these authentic experiences that they'll go through in the Choices Program. And it helps them do exploration and make those plans uh, for the future. What do they need to do to get there? You look at uh, what kinds of courses you need to take in high school in order to qualify to get into the college that you want to to, to get on that track for the job that you want to, for the career that you want to. So this is all an integrated group of activities and, and initiatives um, that, that you know, speak so powerfully, I think, about the dedication uh, of, the, of the folks in, in this community. And again, uh, it really does take a village. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Francis. At this time, uh, we'll open it up to questions, uh, questions for Noel or I or any of the members, uh, uh, any of the folks that are here. Well, this is for Noel for you. What uh, uh, President Sprague said, well, the kids will listen to business people. Will they listen? And I'm a little confused about whether this is a college prep or a dropout prevention. Or is it both? It's really a dropout prevention uh, series of workshops, and we're bringing in employers to help um, inform these students uh, about the choices that they make. Uh, and it will have, uh, it does connect to uh, career exploration programs because hopefully uh, they will, uh, you know, the purpose is to keep them in school and to think about uh, their future. So hopefully they'll think about college and maybe going on to BCC, a two-year degree or a four-year degree. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything you want to add or any of the other speakers. I think, I think that it's... Yeah. 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 I think the best part about it is that it's somebody who's not their teacher. It's not somebody who they see every day that's speaking to them. And they're giving them their, the program is designed and it encourages the speakers to include their personal stories in part of the workshop. So with them providing that information, it'll, it, it'll help to establish more of a personal connection between the speaker and the students. And how are the, how are the young people going to be selected? It's not every eighth and ninth grader. It's going to be, who's at risk or determined to be at risk? How will that happen? Well, because this is a pilot, that we're working on. At Hastings Middle School, they have two workshops that are available. The um, structure of which classes to, to, will be selected is not 100% set as yet. With New Bedford High, we're working with them um, to work out how we can basically slot this in with their internal logistics as easily as possible so that we don't disrupt the many things that they have going on at New Bedford High um, right now. So that way we're able to start the program, see how it goes, test it, get it evaluated, and then next year really expand so that with the goal of um, being able to hit every ninth grader in the New Bedford Public Schools. That's, that's where we would like to see this program grow to, but of course we need to be able to grow it in a um, sustainable way. When you say evaluate how the, the success of the program, what evaluation tools will you have in place to see there is a student evaluation form that the students complete at the end of the workshop, and then something that um, we are writing into the plans here internally at the at, um, Connecting Activities so, is to hopefully sit down with some of the students that have taken the Choices Workshop and run a discussion with them to find out what their thoughts and feelings are about the workshop. And then will you try and include in terms of then how the program might affect uh, attendance, these kids actually staying in school, will you be tracking kids who have participated in the workshop at all? Or? 
I think for this time, with it being a pilot, what we want to do is see was there any change with this with this group um, right within the very beginning, and then expand it from there. And this program is funded through the web entirely, or? Uh, through the web, yes, through yeah. some uh, funding that we receive uh, from the Workforce Investment Board um, through a collection of, um, of sources. We also receive some private funding, <coughs> uh, some funding from the schools as well. Any other questions? So in the pilot program, how many youngsters will be involved? In total, there will be a um, hundred and, I think it's hundred and sixty at New Bedford High. Um, with the possibility of 180, we're actually um, working out with the scheduling. And then with, there'll be 60 at Hastings Middle School in Fairhaven. And, uh, and is it uh, one 90 minute, one, uh, one 90 minute session or is it two 45 minutes? It's two 50 minute sessions. Two 50 so, minutes. Right. It's broken up into the usual class time is about 50 minutes, so what this program does is it's set up to be easily slotted into the schedule already existing at um, <coughs> the school systems. Is it enough? Is two sessions enough to drive home the message that you're hoping to drive home? It's an important message. I just, is it enough? I mean, I guess it's worked elsewhere, so right. it should work here. It's a national program. They have great success <coughs> nationally, and they've also had um, these programs happen in Canada and Australia as well. So the studies that have come from the Choices Nonprofit is that they have positive effects, and we're really, um, really working towards having that happen here in our region as well. Roy, now, what do you hope to get by the of, of business participation? Are, do you have a target number, and is it? It's always a challenge to get folks free from their day jobs. We are, and that's why we're here today. We're hoping that our friends in the media can help um, get the word out. We are trying to recruit volunteers to help with this uh, this program. Again, this is a pilot. Uh, it's uh, it's not a huge commitment of time. It's about five hours altogether, the two uh, one-hour sessions, and then about three hours for training. And then there's, uh, there's a lot of training that's provided, a lot of, uh, there's um, some props here, some copies of the, uh, the kits. And I think for this uh, pilot program that we're starting, I think we only need about 17. Is that correct? Or right. 17 yeah. volunteers from within the business community. So we're going to be looking uh, looking for businesses to step up. I did want to mention that uh, uh, banks uh, do receive uh, CRA credit for allowing their employees to participate in this program. So if there's any financial institutions in the community, uh, we would encourage you to, to send your employees uh, to this uh, program and help us out. CRA stands for? I'm sorry, Community Reinvestment Act credit. I can answer. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> Jim. Just to your the question about the critical mass and, and you know how many students will this impact? Uh, this is as as the, has been described by by Roy and and so and and staff. Uh, it's a pilot program. However, what we do is we look at pilot programs in terms of the potential for expansion. You learn from those pilot programs. The same thing with our program with the middle college at BCC. We started small. It, it went very, very well. So you replicate and you expand. And that's the thought here, too. We have There are other uh, resources that we have in New Bedford, for instance, our Race to the Top grant. So should this take off and should we see some really good um, uh, gains here and some successes for students? And again, they're measured in different ways. Certainly, initially, Initially, you want to get uh, some um, more anecdotal information about perceptions. How are the students looking at things? Do they know something more now than they did before uh, they they participated? Uh, but then there's some hard data that we would look at as well. So as this program evolves, we would be looking for additional resources, just like we, we did with um, you know with BCC, uh, to uh, to to get more of, of of what's a good thing. And that's a very very important concept. And without this initiative, without the start that that you know has been uh, moved for with the chamber and, and with the web, we, we wouldn't be able to do that. So that's why we're so grateful in New Bedford that that's going on because it's a place to start and a place to expand from. Will this happen within school time or after school? Within school time. Within school. And that, that's one of the things that we talked about was the logistics of that. And so we, we, it's always striking that balance. We want to make sure that we uh, maximize the student's learning time, but these things are important to integrate in, in, into a student's day. Any other questions? If 
there are no other questions, then I'd like to uh, thank you all for attending uh, this uh, morning's press conference. We have a, a ton of uh, refreshments and coffee, so please, uh, please take some. Otherwise, uh, the chamber staff has to eat them all, so we don't want to. <laughs> so take some with you. And um, uh, we are available. If there's any other questions, you can uh, contact us. All, all the members of the media have uh, press kits. Uh, so you can reach out to me, Noel, or anyone, uh, any of our partners. So again, thank you very much for uh, attending today. And, and you heard one of the key themes uh, today was partnerships. Uh, partnerships are key in, uh, to solving some of the challenges that we have uh, here in New Bedford with our school system. So again, thank you for being good partners and, and attending this morning. Appreciate it. GED diploma, the barriers in your life fall. Take the first step and get free GED information in your area at 1-877-38-YOUR-GED or yourged.org. Earn your GED diploma and begin your brighter future. hard. Graduating can be even harder. But you can help Jose and the students in your community make it through by visiting boostup.org. Well, I first started skating with my friend. He had an extra board and then he just gave it to me and I've been skating ever since. Well, when I don't learn a trick and I have my mind set on something, and I'm not getting what I want, I just keep going for it until I get it right. Um, my mom, she didn't go to college, so she wants me to experience that whole thing.
and so I could end up getting like a good job. Ah. I think to get into college, I'll have to be determined. Just like when I want to get a new trick, and skating's helped me realize I've got what it takes.